Welcome to Impact Farming, where we introduce you to the people and ideas that will have a massive impact on your farming operation. Brought to you by Farm Marketer. Sit down, start the engine, and let's roll with today's show. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Impact Farming Show. We have the very amazing Jerry Friesen here with us. Welcome back. Thanks, Tracy. You are very, very welcome. <laughs> I enjoyed speaking with you. I enjoy having you on the show as always. You are a tremendous resource for farmers in your career and for our show. So I am excited to have everybody back. Jerry and I, for the month of November, are going to be doing two episodes together. Our one episode, we're going to be speaking about mental health for farmers and that's directly to the farmer, the concerns and all of that subject material directed towards the farmer. And this episode, we're gonna be speaking about mental health for frontline workers. And when we say that, that is anybody that works with farmers, whether that is the agrologist, the feed salesperson, who else is there? The vets? Vets, bang, I'm not sure. Creditors, suppliers, yeah, the list goes on and on. Everybody. Anybody that works with a farmer goes out there, meets with farmers, because the frontline workers, those are the individuals that have contact directly with the farmer. So we are doing this episode to support the frontline workers. On the show here, we've actually taken the month of November and dedicated it to mental health. We've had one, one crazy, crazy year in 2019, and I know we chat about it in the other episode. We have drought, we have flooding, then we have drought, then flooding, and we have trade issues, and we have politics, and all of that good stuff. So. We want to chat directly with the frontline workers on your connection point with farmers and how important you are. So why don't we dive in there? Right, and, and I'd say, Tracy, it's too, too faceted. There's two spokes to this wheel, as it were. Uh, and one is the fact that very often frontline workers are the, probably one of the first ones that really feel the brunt of a, one of their clients, farmers' uh, stress but also that, that we want to work on or talk about that piece where when that frontline worker goes home, where are they at with their mental health? And I think those are two very important areas that need to be covered. Okay. And, and I started doing this actually in 2010. Um, we had, I facilitated workshops in Brandon, and the first phase of it was talking about men and depression, and again, we talked before about men have a tougher time acknowledging, talking about, and dealing with, with stress and with mental health issues than women do, for example. So this was strictly focused for men, uh, and it's interesting when spouses come with the men or partners come with the men because they're the ones that have often pushed the guy through the door, right, and, and they want to help, and, and they do. Um, <clears throat> but then the second phase was talking to frontline workers, and, it, and I found it very incredible how many, uh, particularly bankers, signed up for the workshops we put on. And so there was a keen interest on, okay, how do we help these people? How do we help our clients when we show up at the farm, which is our job, and they're experiencing all this stress, and they start talking to us? We, we need to know how to react to that. Well, absolutely. Anybody that works with a farmer, they're a point of contact, and we'll dive into that, but especially the bankers, right? That's a... <clears throat> Well, and again, through my farm debt work, um, I experienced that myself, too. And, and I remember the day I um, was dealing with a farmer. He was sitting across the table from me, and we had just barely started talking about his financial issues, and he suddenly got up out of his chair, and I thought he was going to come across the table at me because he was so frustrated, not with me, but with everything going on on his farm, and he perceived me as being someone that was there just to add to that. Right. And so, I mean, uh, and me and him both laugh about that today because we actually, through that whole process, became friends. And so uh, I sometimes give him a rough time about, you know, what <laughs> happened. But, 
but that paints a picture of what can so easily happen out there. Well, and you hit the nail on the head perfectly for what I want you to talk about. When you are a frontline worker, we'll call them, and working with farmers, you're dealing with a client in one of the most stressful occupations, right? Absolutely, and I think it's worth our time to talk about um, the um, survey that the University of Guelph did. Uh, when they interviewed 1,100 farmers, I think that was in 2016, and I'm just going to check to make sure I've got these numbers right. But out of the 1,100 farmers they surveyed, 45% reported high levels of stress. There was 58% that met the criteria for anxiety, and 35% met the criteria for, for depression. Wow. And th those are really, really scary numbers when that is something that's so prevalent in our farming community. Well, just think, if I'm a banker and I'm sitting across from a farmer, based on those numbers, they're, well, I'm not a mathematician, but there is a high chance if there's a farmer sitting across from me that they are dealing with stress, anxiety, or depression. Absolutely. And, and, and what's happening is, if you're, it doesn't matter what you are, a banker or any other type of, of working with whatever organization you work with that deals with a farmer is is to be able to distinguish like I mean if, if I'm that person I have a job to do right yes and and my job may simply add to the stress the farmers already feeling so instantly there's that tension uh, but then there's also even if that's not the case and I recall feed salesmen in the day when I was a hog producer feed salesmen from every one of the companies in the Brandon area would show up at my place and for no other reason than to have coffee and chat, right? Because we were friends as well. And that's what happened. You build relationships over time, but suddenly when the wheels come off or when there's issues in agriculture, then the, the dynamics of that relationship changes. Mm. And so, so people, these frontline workers, show a real curiosity for, okay, this is happening, what can I do to help? And, and the other aspect, and I did a workshop last winter in, in Alberta, and one of the creditors there talked about, you know what happens is, I live in that community, my kids play on the same hockey team as the farmer's kids, oh, yes. but I have a job to do. So now, how do we change this? So if I go deal with the farmer during the day, and at night I meet them in the arena, like that, that tension is still there. So there's all kinds of stuff that happens in this relationship. Oh, that is, yeah. So w before we dive into that a little bit more, I, I want to talk and get your opinion, perspective, you deal with farmers. Why are farmers so resistant to seeking help? Well, we always fall back on the good old stigma. There's a stigma to, if I have mental health issues, if I have this stress, I don't want to admit it. Uh, very often I think people think there's a problem with themselves. The confidentiality thing, the isolation thing, they haven't dealt with it. Uh, very often we blame someone else, and you know what, we talked about you know, government policies, trade issues, all these things that are happening out in the world that are decreasing my bottom line, for example, or are decreasing my marketing or my sales or my whatever it is, So, but I'm the one that has to now deal with my banker or the creditor or the supplier, right? Yeah. And so we're lashing out because we need to blame someone. It doesn't feel good if it's myself that's at fault, right? Well, and I guess that, is that exactly why the frontline workers can be the target? Very often that is, and and I think thinking about it and hearing stories from other people, I think very often what happens is um, farm, farmers are loath to talk to their family about it. I tried to hide it from my family when I was experiencing mental health. I didn't want to talk to them about it. So who's the next person I see walking out the door is a feed salesman that shows up. Okay. So guess what? He can be the target. Okay. Never mind the fact that. His company is a company that I now owe money to, which I can't afford to pay for whatever reason, right? Mm. So there's that combo again of how do I how do I deal with that? 
Well, and I kind of think of like a pressure cooker, so to speak. If farmers are under a lot of pressure and that field feed sales person comes and they're that next bill, is that the point that causes the pressure cooker to explode, right? Because we often hear if people react with really strong emotion and it's maybe a bit excessive, it's not really about what's happening right here. Exactly. It's about what everything's working up to be and then a frontline worker shows up on the farm and all of a sudden they're the brunt of it. I, I read a perfect quote. We like quotes. We right? love quotes. And it, and it went like, when, when you see someone like that, you have to understand it is just someone who's been juggling endless expectations in a complex environment for an extended period of time and they have found someone safe to talk to. Ooh, can you say that again? Can you say it again? It is just someone who's been juggling endless expectations in a complex environment for an extended period of time and they have found someone safe to talk to. So it all comes out. It all comes out. And, and I think that the point you made, it's not just that one issue. Because if it was just that one issue, number one, there probably wouldn't be any stress in a person's life, right? Very true. So it's a, it's a whole accumulation of various things that at that point. And again, I often talk about when, when, when people have overwhelming stress, one of the first things that changes is their expectations for others and their expectations for themselves. They go up. Okay. So we have these unrealistic expectations of of ourselves because we're we again feel we're not doing what we should do, so our expectations go up. Mm. Plus anybody that comes within sight of me, I have higher expectations for them too, right? That's why very often relationships in fact start falling to pieces when there's a lot of stress, because our expectations go completely out of whack. Is that that's <laughs> I love this thing. I love the psychology here, but probably because of the pressure, right? The pressure Absolutely. goes up and the Absolutely. expectations go Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Right? Yep. Okay. And we and we have unrealistic expectations. Hmm. Very interesting. That yeah. is a powerful quote. And unrealistic expectations lead to future resentment. Yes. Let's not go down that route. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, geez. Wow. Okay, that's very powerful. So we spoke about the stats, we shared that, and the fact that um, frontline workers are often that first one there, they are that safe outlet. What can frontline workers do? Well, and again, as difficult as it may be, um, the first and foremost thing that anybody can do, whether you're a frontline worker or a partner or family member, whatever, is listen. Listen, listen, listen. Uh, again, you know, when I talk about the neighbor that came to ask me how I was doing, he didn't provide any advice, but he listened. And, and acknowledge, normalize, and validate what, what your client is going through. Because, and and it's, this is where it becomes murky at times, is whether you're talking about feelings, what, what's the farmer feeling, or what are the facts that are involved here. And so you have to tr tr try and distinguish when a farmer is talking to you, when one of your clients is talking to you, what's he expressing? You know, and then if to talk about the feelings, but at some point in time, yes, the reality of it is, is yes, I get why you're feeling the way you do. Um, it's normal. But, by the way, you owe some money on your bill which you haven't paid, right? Mm. So, so that's where that... That's where it can become very, very difficult. Okay. So let them talk. And Okay. That is very, very powerful. I know you have a handful of resources. Did you want to share those? Do you have some resources? What, what, what people can do to help? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, and again, um, I mean, we have to be careful that we're em empathetic empathetic rather than sympathetic like if you're empathetic and Brene Brown has a short video she does that just explains that so clearly because when you're when you when I feel sorry for you it's not necessarily helping you right but if I show you empathy 
uh, I show you understanding, I listen to what you're saying, that is something that can be helpful to, for that, that client of yours, that farmer, to work their way through what the issues are. And again, that comes more from listening. I was just going to say that yeah. listening piece, right? It, it, that listening piece is so very, very important. That's powerful, and I know we've chatted about that before, and I think it's just human nature. When something is on my mind, and I, <laughs> maybe we go to that female-male dynamic again that I love to chat about, I don't need anybody to fix my problems, yeah. right? Because I know what needs to be done. Yeah. I really do, and it usually everybody knows what needs to be done. We just need to talk about it. So by listening and not giving advice, because I've made the mistake too, if somebody's telling me, I will always want to help. So you're like, well, what if you do this? Now I know, just let it out. Yeah. Let them talk, yeah. let them talk, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. The other thing that can happen very easily is, is when you're in a situation, and, and I, I could reference the BSE situation in cattle, which stuck around for how many, ten years, seven to ten years, somewhere in there. Um, you know, the, the issues that we're going to have this year, let's call it a hangover if nothing else, that, that's going to stick around for a while. And when you're dealing with clients, and, and I found myself doing this, or this could happen to me quite easily, is after I had done so many fouls with, with farmers that I got to the point where at times I had to be very careful and catch myself that I didn't judge someone. Mm. It's so easy to go, well, you know what, and, and I've seen, quite frankly, I've seen bankers make statements in mediation meetings that were not helpful. Oh, shoot. And were not empathetic, and, and, and they were, in fact, accusatory and very, very judgmental. Well, that doesn't help the situation at all. No, because then everybody's guards are just going to get up, Exactly. Right? Exactly. Um, and, and then what happens is when you start judging, or when you feel yourself burning out, in fact, it's very easy to become cynical as well, okay. right? And so when you become cynical, um, you can't deal with your clients. Mm. Because again, it's not going to be helpful. No, no way. So, okay. so that's where you have to, and again, uh, and I, I, maybe I should have prefaced everything by saying, you know what, as a frontline worker, you're not the lifesaver. You're not the person out there that now has to fix the problems and save these people. But because as you're doing your job and you're listening, 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 I've also seen people that, frontline workers, that were trying to do things that were outside of their power, outside of their expertise. So you have to make sure you know your own limitations as you work with these people. Because, because uh, as a farm debt mediator, I wasn't trained to be a counselor. I wasn't, I wasn't trained to, to try and diagnose what the situation was. It was more to be there to facilitate discussions and help these people. So know your own limitations. Yeah, that's wise advice. I, I saw, and, and actually uh, the Manitoba Farm and Rural Stress Line uses, uses this, and I saw a, a nice slide the other day of where it said, stay in the boat with your life jacket on. So, and, and the picture is of someone in a boat trying to help a couple of people that are in the water, right? Okay. And so, the, 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 the analogy is simply this. When your clients are drowning, don't jump in the water to try and save them. Yeah, cause because they're going down. Exactly. Yeah. So you have to make, and again, that, that, that's, uh, you have to be very much aware. So the self-awareness piece comes into this as well. Be aware of where that situation is at and make sure you know your limitations. Okay, very wise advice. And, and I, I, you know what, I could sit and talk about this, but, but I, I know again when I, when I do workshops where there's participants and they start sharing stories and, how, and, and you hear people how they deal with it in different ways, that's where we learn from each other and that's a really important piece to this. Connection. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Excellent. So I wanted to hop in there, and you may have it on your list. We chatted about it in our other episode for farmers. I think it is worth definitely repeating here. Resources in terms, you're, you're working with the farmers, and it might not be a bad idea to know about the farm and stress lines. And I think we mentioned do more egg. 
I, and I mention them because they've been out there and leading and really they have a page on their website that has resources yeah. for farmers. Yeah. If you're struggling or if you're a frontline worker to maybe have that handy and know that in case you all of a sudden do that farm call and suspect that something might not be right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, resources is key and, and I would challenge people when they're dealing with their clients to have a little card in their pocket and, and they're available out there actually. I've, I've seen them where, where the different line, you know, the farm line is available even... I'll take it one step further. We, we often talk about listen, ask, and get help. And, and now we're talking when, when there's more than stress involved, there's significant mental health issues involved and we're and there's a danger of suicide. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where and and it's it's extremely difficult. But I, through my training, I actually learned that when you feel that someone's at risk, you have to ask. And that's that's probably one of the most difficult things I had to do at times. Is where I would, I remember one night I was sitting at home and someone that I worked with had been talking to the farmer, for example, and the farmer had made a made a threat. Uh, he was going to end his life, oh, and wow. uh, so this person called me and said, I don't know what to do. I said, not a problem. So I called the farmer, and I just straight out asked, are you planning on hurting yourself? And so, in fact, people have often said, well, you shouldn't ask that because it's actually going to plant the seed. No, it won't. I wondered about that, yeah. and people wonder about that, yeah. right? No, it won't, because that seed is already there. Right. So you you have to come out and ask, and so so there again, not to go beyond what you're what you're capable of doing. Again, knowing your limitations, but you can listen, ask, listen, and and get help if needed. Excellent. I actually I didn't have a chance to tell you this, but Do More Egg is doing the mental health training. Yeah. And I've known about it for some time, and I do. A lot of episodes on mental health on our show just because, I mean, we deal with our brains every day, right? And mental health is so big in our lives. And I have known about the training. And finally, one night, actually, the funny thing was, I was on Egg Twitter. And I seen these farmers struggling. And I said, right, Tracy. I, I challenged myself. And immediately that night, I knew Do More Egg yeah. was... Um, shortly going to be closing the deadline for their uh, mental health training in the communities. I think I got it by one day and it just reminded me I applied and I didn't even tell you that. Steinbeck, Manitoba is one of I believe 20 oh, communities. Really? Yes. I was, I was a successful applicant okay. and in 2020 our community here yep. I am going to be facilitating the mental health training. Oh, perfect. And I'm very excited because as much as I have read about it because I'm an employer and I mean you're around people all the time, I need to know about anxiety and depression and I've had different people come in and out of my life and I've read a lot, but I will honestly admit if somebody was having a panic attack, if somebody was suicidal, I would be at a loss of how to handle it. So I'm I'm very excited, yeah. and again, we can only do with what's in what we can handle. But I want to know those correct things to say, what to do in those situations. So I'm going to be taking that, and you know, I do work with farmers. Yeah, we know farmers, yeah. but I imagine that that training would be fantastic Absolutely. for any frontline worker. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I I haven't taken it either, and I. I, I was actually going to take it in the last year one time, but I couldn't make it to that date. So it's something that I'm keenly interested in as well. Well, I might be finding my first recruit right here <laughs> yeah, on camera. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I'll keep you posted on the yeah. date. But as simple as that, just being aware, right? We don't need to get into a big therapist session, but just being aware and knowing, right? Yeah, exactly. And and that's uh, we talked about that human connection, and and if. If you as a frontline worker can provide that human connection, that's helpful. Yeah. If you can listen to your client vent to you or pour out their soul to you, that can be helpful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
So there are the resources for frontline workers. We touched a little bit about taking care of yourself. And I want you to go there a little bit because you are a frontline worker. Yeah. And I've often said a, a therapist, which you aren't, but you, you, you end up in those situations. That's some tough stuff, right? It is. And again, there needs to be, when we're going to talk about the self-awareness piece, and, and the best thing I can do is give you an example, Tracy, of uh, seven, eight years ago when I was feeling myself slipping into that dark hole that I've been in before and I didn't want to go there, I made an appointment with a psychologist and, um, and he actually, he told me, and he, he was familiar with the kind of work I do, he says, when you do the kind of work you do, it will drain your emotional gas tank and you're not necessarily aware of the effect it's having on you. So you, so people need to be aware of the fact that, that when you're doing this day in and day out and you're feeling this yourself, you have to be aware of, of what it's doing in your own life. Mm. And you have to make sure then that you address that as best possible. I, I am keenly mm. aware of we spoke about going on social media and you're, you're going through the feed and seeing all those farmers that don't have their crops off and I can tell the stress that it puts me on. I'm pretty yeah. keenly aware of what affects me. But you think of that if you are a banker or a feed salesperson, somebody driving around, like many of you out there, you're going to be driving around the countryside. If you are driving around right now, fall 2019, I imagine you're going from one farm where there's an unhappy farmer to the next, to the next, to the next. I wonder how that frontline worker feels at the end of that day. Exactly. You're not coming out of that day cheery. And exactly. if you are, wow. Well, I, yeah. talk, I talked to someone just last week who deals with people in crisis every day. And she said the rule in her house with her husband was when she got home on a Friday night, he didn't dare talk to her and she didn't want him to talk to her because she needed that evening just to de-stress from all of the stuff that had been going on that week. And, and that's what, that's what, and it's only natural that we feel that. Nobody's tough enough to be able to handle that on an ongoing basis. No, we're all human. But that's where, that's where she said, this is the deal I have with my husband. So she's very self-aware of what's going on in her life and so they make these plans because if, if, if you don't make these plans, then suddenly that relationship starts being hurt okay. because of what happened over here, right? Yes. And you made a really good point in our episode directed at farmers. You need some downtime. Yeah. Uh, we didn't quite word it that way. Do you want to touch on that? Yes. I've, I've, I've come to, to the realization or I've, I'm, I'm aware enough to know, and this happened a few years ago, when I woke up one morning and realized that some of the files I was dealing with and some of the work I was doing was really starting to get to me. And so I knew that I had to back off okay. and, and just step back and make sure, and as the psychologist put it to me, this was some time ago before that, but the psychologist said, make sure you keep your own emotional gas tank full, mm -hmm. right? That's an important piece because you you can't take out more than right. what's there. If you're drained, you can't when you're help drained, anybody you're drained, else. Exactly. And plus, look what it's doing to yourself at that point. Yeah. So be aware of the signs, and, and I mean they're they're the same whether you're a frontline worker or a farmer or anybody else out there that that works with a lot of stress is you're going to start realizing that there's changes to you mentally and physically and to be aware of those things. So when we were recording our episode directed to farmers about mental health, you spoke about the importance of downtime when you were dealing with a lot of heavy stress in your life, right? Right, and, and I'm lucky. Um, I have this ability because of the type of work I do in being self-employed, I can say no to things, right? So if someone calls me and wants to retain me for whatever, I can say no. So it, it's a little easier for me, but it's important to that self-awareness piece to understand and realize when you feel you're 
your gas tank getting empty, whether yeah. it's a physical gas tank or your mental gas tank, your emotional gas tank. So, and and I I've run into that a few times over the last few years where I get up one day and realize, okay, I'm pushing it too hard. I need to step back. So so people have to do that if they possibly can. And I know there's probably people out there going, well, yeah, but I can't. So then there's other ways that we need to, to look at, at how can we how can we survive this period we're going through at this point okay. so we don't further damage ourselves. Okay. And one of the ones, the examples I like that we gave and what we spoke about in our episode for farmers is if you're dealing with a lot of weather related stuff on your farm and having a lot of stress, maybe, I do love our dear egg Twitter, maybe it's not going on to egg Twitter at the end of the night after you weren't able to get out in the fields, right? That, that's right. And I use the example in that episode of, of this lady that was in 2010 or 2011 working with flood victims when we had a lot of flooding going on in western and southwestern Manitoba and, and she told me the story about how she would get up in the morning she would watch news as she was having her breakfast she would drive to work and listen to the radio and hear news she would deal with these people all day long she would drive home listen to the radio and she would get home and turn on the TV and watch news and she said one day I realized that I, she needed to limit that exposure to all the stress going on. Mm. So there's ways and means that if we possibly can to lessen that exposure to stress. Well and that's the hard thing with how connected we are now. Exactly. And they say that a lot of our stress is because we have a device and we're always, we have how many different social media apps, we have our email right there for the most part and thinking exactly of the frontline workers and thinking of some of them that I know from Egg Twitter that visit farms. If you are finding yourself right now, November 2019, going from farm to farm, you're probably probably running into a lot of farmers that aren't quite as happy as they want to be, dealing with a lot of stuff. And then, if you go home and pop onto Egg Twitter like we love to do, you're going to see more of it. Yeah. And I noticed, I'll, I'll give my own example, that I would have some stress on the farm this fall, like I was saying. We had drought and then literally like insane amounts of rain right as we were going to chop our amazing cornfield. And that was very stressful because you know what? We need that feed in the pile to feed the animals. And if it didn't come off, we all know what that means to the farm, right? Exactly. It's going to mean we're buying hay at the ridiculous prices, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. And I'm dealing with it. It's real. That was my day, right? And all of a sudden I pop on egg Twitter. And now I'm dealing with thousands of farmers that are in the same boat. And I, I care. So when I see my egg Twitter peeps out there hurting and in stress, I think it elevates the stress levels. Absolutely, right? yes, without question. And, that, and that's the piece, again the way the psychologist explained it to me is there, there's times we don't even realize it's happening till suddenly one evening or one morning you, you realize, whoa, my life is way out of balance. Mm. What's been going on here? And that's because whether we realize it or not, that these real, these in encounters with people that are feeling a lot of stress or experiencing a lot of hardship do have an effect on us as well. They do. And a lot of people don't realize that, exactly. right? Exactly. And so you talk about social media. So, so I go back to what I, and I've said this to you every time I've talked to you, Tracy, is the importance of talking to others. If, if as a frontline worker you can, you know, a colleague, um, a friend, uh, someone else that's involved in the same kind of work as you are, if you can sit down and, and debrief, if you can talk about it. Again, it's so helpful being able to talk about it. So if I can talk to you about it, about a situation I've had or a week that I've had where I've had to deal with all of this, and you go, yeah, I get that. And, and you talk about your experiences and suddenly, okay, so someone else is feeling the same thing. I've now verbalized what's going on in my head. 
Plus, I've made that human connection, which is always important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That is great stuff. <clears throat> and, you know, we have a lot of frontline workers that watch and listen to the Impact Farming Show. So there's a lot of value in there. I think I asked you all my questions. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Why the frontline worker is that person how to notice some resources, and most importantly, taking care of yourself. Exactly. And, you, and use those same type of stress management tips. And there's a lot of them. And some of them may work and others won't. There's the more complicated ones and there's the easier ones. Just find something that works for you and use it. Excellent. Well, those are amazing words of wisdom. If you do not have anything that can top that amazing stuff you just <laughs> shared, I think we're going to wrap up the okay. interview and I just wanted to put this out there for our audience. If anybody wants to get in touch with you, how can they find yeah, you? The best, best way to get a hold of me at is go to my website which is www.jerryfriesen.ca okay. and there's contact information and I would love to talk to you if there's more information they would like. Um, absolutely, anytime. Excellent. I wanted to personally thank you for the work you do and for joining us on the Impact Farming Show. You're a wealth of knowledge for farmers and I'm very excited to bring this episode that can help our frontline workers and our agriculture community be healthy. Right? I appreciate the opportunity, Tracy. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. And thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you on next week's episode. Thanks, guys. You've been listening to Impact Farming. For more great episodes and articles designed to help you manage and grow your farming operation, head on over to farmmarketer.com. Don't forget to sign up while you're there. We will see you on the next episode.